I would like, first of all, to thank the Coalition for Minority Rights in India for their invitation, in particular Open Doors, and to congratulate them on their relentless work in defense of freedom of religion or belief and minority rights. I'm also grateful uh, to the coalition members that co-authored the report on religious minorities in India for shedding light on such an important issue ahead of the upcoming UPR. And I'm also very glad to be part of this panel along such distinguished guests. Delighted to see Dr. Fernando Varen and Dr. Nazila Ganea among us. Your initiative is particularly remarkable as it constitutes a meaningful example of interreligious cooperation on an issue of common concern, bringing together Christians, Muslims, and Hindus to speak out about the condition of religious minorities in India shows that the protection of form is not a parochial or partisan interest, but rather a shared objective across all communities. Considering its cultural and historical background, Italy has always placed form at the heart of its foreign policy agenda, preventing marginalization, discrimination, and violence on grounds of religion or belief is an imperative for any country that seeks stability, development, and prosperity, both domestically and internationally. If any person is denied the right to participate in public life on account of religion or belief, society becomes fragmented, divided, and impoverished. This is precisely the reason why for protection is and should remain in everybody's interest, be it governments or religious institutions, be it larger or smaller communities. Full protection is not a Western concern either, as sometimes it is portrayed. And to highlight this point, as today we are speaking of India, I would like to recall some of the milestones and the construction of peaceful and cooperative interfaith relations in this country. In the third century before the Christian era, Emperor Ashoka, whose kingdom covered most of the Indian subcontinent and stretched from today's Afghanistan to Bangladesh, enacted some of the earliest legislation on the promotion of interreligious coexistence and tolerance. To this purpose, he adopted several edicts that were then carved on rocks across the country. In one of these inscriptions, it was said that, I quote, the king honors all religious sects with gifts and with honors of various kinds, but he does not value gifts or honor as much as the promotion of the essentials of all religious sects, and other sects should be honored on every occasion. Acting thus, one promotes one's own sect and benefits other sects. Acting otherwise, one both harms one's own sect and wrongs other sects. Coming together is good so that people should both hear and appreciate each other's teaching." End of quotation. Like Emperor Constantine five centuries later in Europe, Ashoka realized that religious intolerance endangered the stability of its empire. In addition to that, he was mindful of the nefarious effects of what we would call today hate speech. Religious diversity has always been a hallmark in India's history, not only in ancient times, as many religious communities were granted the right to settle in its territory across centuries. In the second half of the 16th century of our era, Emperor Akbar the Great, a member of the Mughal dynasty, developed a policy of religious equality. He abolished the jizya, the tax that used to be levied on non-Muslim subjects in Islamic countries in exchange for protection, and established the principle of universal peace as the foundation of interfaith relations in India. He declared that no man should be interfered with on account of religion, and anyone is to be allowed to go over to a religion that pleases him. His commitment to religious freedom was not confined to granting freedom of worship to all subjects. 
To foster interreligious exchange, Akbar established the House of Worship, a place where he used to gather representatives of different faiths to encourage open discussions among them based on reason instead of bigotry. As much as Ashoka, Akbar understood that religious diversity should be promoted as a driver for prosperity and that any policy seek to impose artificial uniformity would weaken any society in the long run, even the most prosperous one. More recently, one of the icons of in Indian history and the prominent Hindu personality, Mahatma Gandhi, embodied the same values of openness, respect, and mutual understanding that have inspired other rulers in the past. To explain the need to reject any unilateral view of life and embrace inclusively, he used to tell the story of seven blind men who gave different descriptions of the same elephant that they had touched. I quote, the seven blind men who gave seven different descriptions of the elephant were all right from the respective points of view and wrong from the point of view of one another. I very much like this doctrine of the manyness of reality. It is this doctrine that has taught me to judge a Muslim from his standpoint and a Christian from his, end of quotation. At the last UPR of India in 2017, Italy formulated a recommendation on abolishing anti-conversion laws and granting access to justice to victims of religious violence and discrimination. Five years later, there are still challenges that need to be addressed to ensure all persons can fully enjoy all their rights under the law, irrespective of their religion or belief. It is my sincere hope that its legacy of religious diversity and equality, inclusion and interfaith cooperation will inspire India while building its future. Thank you again for the opportunity to join today's event. I very, I very much look forward to listening to the other panelists and wish all the coalition members every success in their endeavors. Thank you.